and I can so, bring, you know, we can bring this stuff too. I have solar panels on my roof. Yeah. So that's my app for today. 99% of the power that's great. was produced we need for my house that. today. That's my point. Yeah. We do need more of that. Yeah. And Dominion won't let me go beyond 99% right. no matter what I do. So I can't help those people who live. That was the point he okay. was making about um, having it more distributed. Mm -hmm. So I have enough roof space okay. to do 200%. Mm -hmm. But Dominion doesn't want me competing with them as a power producer. Okay. So they won't help me power my neighbors who may not have the roof space for this because they have trees or whatever else. Okay. They, they limit it to 99%. And that also means that if I go get an electric car, I have to wait to have a year's worth of bills to show that I'm, I need more power from Dominion in order to put another solar panel on my roof. Really? Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. I, I used to do that. Yes. So there's several of us in the room that have okay. solar panels. Okay. And we have all run across the same thing. Okay. Dominion limits how much energy you can produce because they don't want you as competition. So an individual <coughs> family has the capacity to perhaps share with their neighbors. Right. We and could, that's certainly. not allowed. That's correct. Okay. Not allowed. And, and this well, actually affects it. If you look at the map of solar panels in Montgomery County versus us, okay. you exactly. know, we're a desert in comparison to what's all around us because of the Dominion's, you know, rules. And yet, in Fairfax County, it's 10,000 jobs is, is in solar. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so, you know, <laughs> if, well, even well. if you make the jobs argument, what Dominion is telling you is, is, is okay. doesn't work. Okay. Yeah, I used to do EISs uh, with environmental engineers too, and I can echo what he said because, you know, they must have done a very, I didn't see the EIS for those pipelines, but they must have done a very shoddy alternatives analysis and also the purpose and need statement because <clears throat> the solar panels now, uh, I just had my house mm -hmm. evaluated, they're 22, 23% efficient, whereas they used to be. 11, 12 percent efficient, mm -hmm. and Dominion is really slow rolling solar in every way it can. <coughs> and, and you know, it's if if uh, you know that's always the argument with uh, a new, like a new nuclear plant or whatever. Oh well, uh, renewable energy would only account for like 10 percent or whatever because you know there's no batteries or whatever, or they don't assume that everybody can get them on their rooftops. But it's ridiculous that it's so few people have those now. I mean, they should be a lot cheaper. I mean, it would cost, it, yeah. for the cost of getting put on my house, I'd have to wait 10 years for the payback, you know? But that's, that's an unrealistic high charge. You know, and you know, I, I think if somebody like me or or him or whatever had been had able to have input into that EIS, could have pointed things like that out. I think one of the things when you were mentioning that somebody looked at the cost, well, the cost of solar of all renewables is going down. Right. I mean, dramatically, month by month, mm -hmm. in just like four months difference, we'd had estimates and then we got another estimate and it was dramatically different. Mm -hmm. So to, to say that, well, historically they've looked at that. Yes, 10 years ago yeah. it was prohibitive yeah. and we weren't going to be able to accomplish that. But now, you know, we sh I think this is what we're asking of our legislators to say, okay, you show us today's numbers okay. and say that they're not competitive because the I, fossil fuel, I mean the I uh, natural I gas, I think it's not right. the way to go. I think you're right that they are coming down. And I know that I must have been wrong when I said it was to the shareholders and sure yeah. it was to the customers. That was my mistake. So I just want to clarify that. You had a question. Yeah, I think the concerns all revolve around um, the overall incentives uh -huh. and um, to make it really being behind the, um, the times as, as, as far as how as other states do um, energy economy and utilities. Um, I mean, the, just, I mean, just the elephant in the room, a lot of the people here, I mean, regardless, we have an existential crisis of climate change. So, I mean, I, we just really can't keep going the same path, regardless of even if it was profitable. But, I, I mean, I think, um, I think all the evidence is that, um, to be perfectly frank, you have oil and gas interests and, and a monopoly utility making decisions for their bottom line at the expense of the ratepayers, the environment, communities, you know, the um, 
beautiful countryside that's going to be um, destroyed. And um, you know, one easy place that that um, I think um, I'm I'm actually not. Um, I have some energy background, but I'm not an expert, so I really love the book um, Climate of Hope mm -hmm. by Bloomberg and, and Pope from Sierra Club. And um, they have one chapter, I mean, if you were interested in reading it and other people to educate themselves, but they have one uh, a chapter that talks about energy and utilities. And so you have deregulated markets and you have regulated markets. And we have a regulated market where we have a monopoly utility that um, you know is, is incentivized to make profit off of big projects. When you have a deregulated market like New York, California, and others, so we have best practice in the country, um, you know, you can do more of the distributed utility. It's performance-based. You give the customer more options. So really in Virginia, um, if you look at rankings for Dominion, they're like second worst. You know, I mean, they're just well known as being you know, a dinosaur. So I, I think um, some of the grassroots groups have crafted a letter to the governor and what we're going to be pushing for is for legislators like yourself and, and the governor to fundamentally look at the rules of the game for how we are um, giving our, our, our utility its incentives, how uh, there's no teeth, no oversight with the DEQ and the SCC mm -hmm. that you know they're just really not doing, um, they don't have enough oversight and, and accountability for the consumer. So I think we really need to re completely rewrite the rules of the game. And just besides climate change, we are falling behind on the new energy economy. So it's, it's about jobs and, uh, and businesses as well. I appreciate that. I, I I'll tell you, I know that a, a small group of my colleagues wrote a letter to the governor asking for more oversight and more action on DEQ's um, behalf. I didn't know that they were writing the letter, um, but I would have signed on to it had I had I been aware that it was happening. But I just recently got a copy of it. Yes, sir. I just have to say that was awesome. That was yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so I have some involvement in the energy industry internationally, mm -hmm. and nobody is investing in centralized production. Okay. I mean, just nobody. You know, if you had money, if you had a lot of money you wanted to invest, you would not invest it in any kind of a centralized power plant, because that is not the way it's going. It's going towards decentralized production, mm -hmm. and it just reiterates that you know. However you play it, I mean, to us, you know, to many of us, Dominion is the bad guy. And so we can say, well, you know, they're in this position, whatever. But we see that they make the decisions in the state capitol. You know, they're literally in the committee meetings saying yes or no to things. Uh, and it just, you know, that's a huge issue in the state of Virginia. And I think, you know, the trend of, uh, you know, our representatives in Richmond not accepting Money from Dominion is one that we absolutely have to push forward. Uh, and it's the only way things are going to change. You know, it's up to us to do it. It's up to us to change their behavior, and that's what we're trying to do. Right. I respect that. Um, I, in the negotiations over this last bill, as I said, there were 30 stakeholders in the room, including the Sierra Club and the League of Conservation Voters and the Poverty Law Center, who um, by the end of the bill, none of them were opposing it. Um, in fact, the League of Conservation Voters was supporting it. Um, that's probably better than what yeah, we had. Yeah, I know. So, so that's okay. That's, I mean, that's politics. That's okay. That's, that doesn't mean it's a good bill. I mean, I think they, they got it because it was the best that, that they thought they could get. I think that's different than saying they're actually thinking it's a good bill. So well, from where it started yeah. to where right. it ended, yeah. there was a lot yeah. of improvement. I was glad to have been a part of pushing to make those improvements. I had a lot of conversations over the course <coughs> of the of the, of the um, session about it. So yeah. the Dominion bill, it's over and it's done. Uh -huh. That legislative right. session is over. Correct. I think what you're hearing in the room is a lot of frustration. Yes. Is all. I you're frustrated that. with the politicians taking money from Dominion and then never voting against them, whether they're on the Democratic side or the Republican side. Frustration about that Dominion is saying they need these pipelines and they're going to be building eight more um, mm -hmm. in the state when you don't need it. So you hear that frustration. And you're hearing what we want to know, what I want to know is where do we go for energy? Because I, you're, you're talking to people now and I think people are becoming more and more educated about this issue. Yeah. And, you know, as Al said, are these protests helping? They're going to become massive. 
we won't stand for same old, same old anymore. It is a crisis right now. And what do we do to get politicians in Richmond to listen and to change the policies? And one of them is that the Dominion and that needs to be taken down. That's, that's just it. You need to have community people on the FCC. You yes. need to have politicians who are willing to say no to their bills right. and not say, well, we have to compromise because we're afraid we won't get anything else. How do we relate that? How do we build strength so that people hear us? Because the frustration is nobody is listening. Mm -hmm. It's urgent. Oh, that's more urgent. Are you aware of the That's what they tell you, but the Democrats are doing the same thing. Not, well, not the new ones that were elected. Like, not the new ones, much but they all together. I was amazed and yeah. never so proud of all of them. You have a lot of Democrats that are there that are still taking money from Dominion I know. and Dominion still voting. Well, Ken so. Plum. You know, who's a yeah. beloved yeah. man has taken yeah. over a hundred thousand dollars and has never once voted against him. His biggest contributor. Yeah. 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 So I mean, mm. yeah. let's not go into the yeah. individuals. Could you guys all well, remind? I mean, there is an option now for delegates and senators. I can't. I'm, I was just trying to Google the name of the group, but there's a millionaire in Virginia. Yeah, who, but that's. I'm not going to sell. My, I'm not going to. I'm not going to tell somebody I'm going to do something legislatively because they give me money on any side. And I think it's just as bad at what he's doing as what you're thinking that people who take money from Dominion do. Because we're not there to sell our votes. We're there to provide the best government that we can. Sure. And if you, want to, if you want to give me a contribution, that's what you get. And I'm not promising that I'm going to vote yes or I'm going to vote no on any piece of legislation. I'm going to look at it. I'm going to weigh all the sides and I'm going to make the best decision that I can based on the information that I know and to do anything else I believe is unethical and I've been endorsed by the Sierra Club, Kim Plum has been endorsed by the Sierra Club consistently. Mm -hmm. if, if he was selling the farm away they would not have been with him and so I feel like that's an easy thing to target but it's a lot more complex than that. I understand. And okay, it's really so how do we have the same power sure. by not, because um, yes. we don't have PACs that can give you all that money. And, and we're not you particularly, but how right. do we as, 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 you know, right. you don't how have do professional we as, lobbyists, exactly. so that's, that's real right. How problem. do we as that's citizens make our problem. voices heard? Mm -hmm. How do we turn around the legislature? How do they know, you know, that we want action? We don't yeah. want to have people have to sit in trees sure. to protect their I own know. property. <laughs> I, I we don't know. want to have, you know, the pollution. We don't want to have methane, um, which is way more dangerous than coal if you look at the health effects um, you know, and the sinkholes and everything else. How do we get our yeah. legislators to listen? Yeah. Well, I think that's a good point. I think one thing is we all use energy. I mean, I, I use energy, and when it goes out, I get frustrated and angry. It, it seems to me, until we know that we have the ability to meet everybody's needs off the grid or you know, making renewable energy something that's really self-sufficient for everyone, then we're, we're in a bind. Then we can't, well, you know. I, I think that what I'm hearing from you is yeah. that you guys, you meaning the legislators, yeah. we feel like you're listening to the scientists from Dominion mm -hmm. But it has been proven that okay. they have an agenda. Mm -hmm. They work for a fossil fuel company. Mm -hmm. So they want you to understand why you need that natural gas mm -hmm. and why you need to stay with fossil fuel. They don't want you to understand. So there's a lot of very educated people in the community. So maybe what you were saying, you wanted to get a meeting together with their scientists. Well, then maybe what and we need to do is bring in, too. well, yeah. not just environmentalists, but, but environmental yeah. scientists, right. people exactly who can right. talk on yes. a technical level head that, to head, exactly because we're right. feeling like we're being bullied by, you know, the Dominion and their powers. And that's what, because they're big, that's what we feel like you guys are hearing. And even though we know that we're right, our voice isn't being heard. So if we could put together some sort of that's a exactly talking what thing. what I want to do is have people who are, and that's why I said not the government relations people, but really the engineers and the scientists, and then bring in environmentalists who can ask the, te the technical questions that I don't know to ask, right. 
bring them together to have conversation that we can understand so we can hear the answer. So it's not, you know, one side talking to this side and one side talking to the other. That's exactly what I think would be a great idea. And um, I'm happy to work to facilitate that. I, I would like to follow yes. up on the last two questions because you can make comments and say, I don't know, maybe I misunderstood you, but I thought you said earlier that uh, natural gas was cleaner than coal and oil. Mm -hmm. And that's recent right. science shows that's clearly not the case. Is that I've always heard that it's cleaner. I've always heard that it's cleaner. Yes, and that was the talking point. And well, you know, yeah. we've, we've now learned that that's not true. So, you know, the, the different voice aspects. hasn't changed. Yeah. Well, it is at the very beginning. Yeah, let Dave continue. Let's let him finish his comment. I just want to say, I'm not in your district, so maybe this will be so important to you. But um, personally, I'm quite disappointed with the way you're talking about, well, I don't know, and uh, I need to learn more about this, et cetera. Yeah. I realize that, you know, your state legislators work very, very hard, and uh, it's not a full-time job for you. It actually still, is. I think almost everybody in this room. For $17,000. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but nevertheless, you decided you wanted to do this. Absolutely. And there's no issue that's more important than this issue. Mm -hmm. And I think most of the people in this room have educated themselves about the issue. You're our leader. And so sure. I just find this disappointing okay. that someone is saying, I know this little about this most important issue we face. I just want to I respect that. that. And if you would let me just respond. I have a background in, in local government. I follow, I have focused on women's issues regarding reproductive health, uh, equality issues. Those were the things that motivated me to run. Social justice issues. And I realized that the environment is a big part of social justice, but I have focused, I, I can't do everything. I'm not, and I could come in here and pretend like I was an expert, and I could say yes to everything that you're saying, and we that would not be it. honest with me. <laughs> yeah. And I'm trying to be honest with you. Yeah. When I, you know, yesterday, I, had five, I did five events. Today, I've had four. I haven't had a chance to return phone calls today because I've been in the car going from Loudoun County over to Centerville, back to Loudoun County, and now here. I, I actually don't, I mean, I've had this conversation with John. I don't take a day off. Okay, um, I appreciate that. And I, I, I understand this is very important to you, but I have 84,000 constituents who care about transportation, they care about health care, they care about education. And I'm doing the best I can, and I'm sorry that it's not enough for how, you. How do we help our legislators to realize that if we don't address this issue correctly, women's issue will not matter, sure. That's right. jobs yeah. will not matter, exactly. none of this will matter, and we will not get ourselves out of the pickle we are getting ourselves sure. into right now. So how do we help you guys to realize that out of all the issues that are all important and there's a lot of pressure, this is really by far, according to all scientists, mm -hmm. with any reputation whatsoever, across the entire world, sure. there is no question right now where our priorities should lie. So how do we I think you keep doing so things like this. I think you keep slow. It's yeah. It is slow. I it is. We, we don't have time. Yeah. We're, we're in a very small couple of year window to turn this around. And I, I will volunteer my services. I'm a climate reality leader and I my sole purpose is to go out and help educate people okay. about the environmental issues and the solutions that we have to hand. I'd offer to give you a one-on-one -on -one if you want to get other legislators together, your I staff, mean, yeah. whoever. I'll give you my business card okay, because be great. I, I really, our whole issue is to try to educate all of our neighbors, our peers, and mm -hmm. so that they understand the same urgency. Why we're hearing the scientists tell us, I mean, they're screaming, and scientists are normally very calm don't say anything people hear, yeah. and they're panicking so you know we've got to help rally sure I hear you know and, and congressman Don Beyer is a great example who yes. says this yes. is the most important issue of our lifetime yes. I understand that the General Assembly 
is not like Northern Virginia, and it is like pulling teeth to get any sort of action in the body. I mean, it's really discouraging, and it's frustrating, and it's depressing. And um, I agree, we have a ton of work to do, and education is a huge part of it. Um, one of the things, you know, people are concerned about gun violence. That seems to be the issue of the day. And so we are doing a series of meetings around the Commonwealth 